Hello, hello. Welcome to this video about dependency parsing and dependency relations. In this video, we will cover another syntactic concept. If you remember the previous video, we can parse a sentence for labeling the post tags, which are the building blocks of syntax. Post tags are quite useful, however, they don't offer a structured representation for the sentence. In this video, we will see a structured representation of a sentence, which is a parse tree. As the name suggests, dependency parsing is related to analyzing sentence structures via dependencies between the tokens. A dependency parser takes syntactic relations between tokens of the sentence and connects syntactically related pairs of tokens. A dependency or a dependency relation is a directed link between two tokens. The result of the dependency parsing is always a tree. Immediate examples. On the left hand side, we really see a tree. The root of this tree is the verb prefer, left child of prefer is I, which is the subject of the verb. Right child is flight, which is the object of this verb. Next, Flight has three children, two, its determiner, the, its modifier, morning, and its another modifier, true, Denver. Now, look at to the right, this is the same tree. Look carefully. Instead of tree outline, the sentence is written in a flat way, but you can see the arcs, which are directed arcs. Each arc leaves the syntactic parent towards the child. Also, each arc has a different label. Labels are indeed dependency relations because each parent is related to these children via a different relation. For an example, the relation between prefer and I is being a verb subject, whereas the relation between flight and the is completely different. It's the relation of being a determiner. I took these examples from Yurovsky book I left the link below the video. It's my favorite book, by the way. I always advise it to the colleagues who are asking for a good reference. Okay, what is the benefit of having a dependency tree aside the post text? Cannot we just use the post text? First of all, human language is a complicated phenomena. A structured parse always can be more semantics than a sequential parse. Post text definitely give clues about neighbor word post text. How about modeling the relations between the far away words? Let's see the same parse example again. If you remember, prefer and flight are in a verb object relation. However, in this sentence, they are not so close to each other. There are two words in between. Related words can be far away indeed. A major advantage of dependence parsing is the able to, to deal with languages that are morphologically rich and have a relatively free word order. Let's see two examples of German. In the middle parse, the sentence reads as I call you, ich rufe dich an. The verb here is anrufen indeed. This is a separable verb and particle an is usually separated. There are a good number of separable verbs in German and particle goes always all the way to the end of the sentence, just like here. So, N at the end is also part of the verb. Here again, verb is anrufen. Conjugated the first person became anrufe. As we see, rufe and on are different positions in the sentence but quite related because they are parts of the same verb. They add up to the sentence verb. Okay, now what happens in this sentence three? This sentence reads as, I call you tomorrow. Here the verb is again on rufen, but this time there are two words between rufe and an, die morgen. Quite far away and more words can come in between because of German grammar rules. How to model this with post text? That's not very possible. Rufe is labeled as verb and on is labeled as a particle, which is correct, but it doesn't indicate any relationship between these two verb parts. 
When I look at the dependency arc, I see the relation SVP, which means a separated verb particle, a relation specific to Nordic languages. This relation doesn't belong to English text set. I will put a link to the German TV bank paper if you want to learn further about this relation. Okay, now we come to more practical concerns. What is the use of dependency relations in NLU then? Quite a number of statistical methods in NLP revolve around vector representations of words and treat a sentence as a sequence of words. As we saw in earlier examples, a sentence is more than a sequence of tokens. It has a structure. Every word in a sentence has a well-defined role, such as verb, subject, object, and so on. Hence, sentences definitely have a structure. This structure is used extensively in chatbots, question answering, and machine translation. The most useful application that first comes to mind is determining the sentence object and subject. Think of a travel agency and algo. Imagine a customer is complaining about the service. Compare the two sentences, I forwarded you the email and you forwarded me the email. The wording is almost the same. Better if we eliminate the stop words, I, you, me and the, this is what remains. Though the remaining parts of the sentences are identical, sentences have very different meanings and of course require different answers. In the first sentence, the sentence subject is I. Then the answer most probably will start with you and the second sentence subject is you, which will end up in a I answer. Obviously, the dependency parser helps us to go deeper into the sentence syntax and semantics. Okay, let's explore more. Let's dissect the dependency relations. A dependency relation is a binary grammatical relation. A dependency label describes the type of syntactic relation between two tokens as follows. One of the tokens is the syntactic parent, called the head, and the other is its dependent, called the child. A dependency relation looks like this. This is the list of English dependency relations. I took them from the Universal Dependence website. I will leave the link below. Well, that's a long list. <laughs> no worries, you don't need to memorize every list item. Let's first see a list of the most common and useful labels, then we will see how exactly they link tokens to each other. Here is the shorter list first. Let's see examples of how these labels are used and what relation they express. A mod is adjectival modifier. As understood from the name, this relation modifies the noun or a pronoun. In the first sentence, we see that black modifies sheep. Aux is what you might guess. It's the dependency relation between an auxiliary verb and its main verb. The dependent is an auxiliary verb and the head is the main verb. In the second sentence, we see that has is the auxiliary verb of the main verb gone. Compound is used for the noun compounds. The second noun is modified by the first noun. In the first sentence, phone book is a noun compound and the phone noun modifies the book noun. The that relation links a determiner, the dependent, to the noun it qualifies. It's head. In the second sentence, the is the determiner of the noun, cat. Next, we look into two object relations, dative and the object. The the object relation is between the verb and its direct object. A sentence can have more than one object, such as in this example. A direct object is the object that the verb acts upon, and the others are called indirect objects. A direct object is generally marked with accusative case. A dative relation points to a dative object which receives an indirect action from the verb. In the sentence shown, the indirect object is me and the direct object is book. N such and N such 
past are two relations that are related to nominal sentence subject. The subject of the sentence is the one who committed the action. A passive subject is still the subject, but we mark it with and such past. Again, in the same sentence, Susie is the nominal subject of the first sentence. You is the passive nominal subject of the sentence in the second example. We have now covered sentence subject and object relations. Now we will discover two modifier relations. One is the num mod, numeric modifier, and the other is the pos, possessive modifier. A numeric modifier modifies the meaning of the head noun by a number or quantity. In the first sentence, num mod is easy to spot. It's between four and cats. A possessive modifier happens either between a possessive pronoun and a noun or a possessive apostrophe s and a noun. In the sentence shown in here, my is a possessive marker of the noun cat. Last but not least is the root label, which is not a real relation, but it's a marker for the sentence verb or root of the tree. A root word has no real parent in the syntactic tree. The root is the main verb of the sentence. In this tree, given and is are the corresponding roots. Notice that the root node has no incoming arc. That is no parent. These are the most useful labels for our NLU purposes. You definitely don't need to memorize all the labels. Just look them up from the Universal Dependencies page. Also, you will become familiar as you practice definitely no worries. Great. Now time to shoot some examples. First, we will play with the Stanford Core NLP parser. We don't do NLTK this time because NLTK doesn't have a native pre-trained dependency parser. Instead, you need to download the Stanford model, this one, which is written in Java, then call the Stanford model within an LTK via a Java binder for Python. That is something I don't prefer to do in my production code because uh, non-native codes to Java in Python or other programming languages are usually slow. You need to do some other call in another language via a binding, which is not good. Instead, I prefer space for Python. I made all the visuals in this video with this place, by the way. I will leave a link below. Okay, let's go to the Core NLP demo page and input my example sentence. Here is the result. Looks quite okay and good to me. Now we do spacey. Let's see a previous example. Please look at the figure, black sheep again. Let's do it programmatically. The dependency label is assigned to the child. Token objects have dep, which is an internal ID, a number, and dep underscore unicode properties that hold the dependency label. That's it indeed. That was sort of a longish video, but that's fine. If it is your first time with dependency concept, Absolutely no worries. It's totally fine to feel alien and say, oh, what, what is it? <laughs> but it's okay. You learned them now. I am pretty sure you will have some places to exercise your knowledge. Don't be scared to just, you know, print the parse tree, have a look. Just look. Always examine the corpus by your eyes a couple of times. Thank you for joining again. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.